Hi guys, so in this video, I'd like to talk about something really interesting which I'm seeing in the markets. What I'm seeing is a huge divergence between the performance of US stock markets and Chinese stock markets. And this doesn't happen all that often. So right now, the US markets and China markets seem to be in two totally different worlds. On one hand, US markets are at all-time highs. They are full of optimism and they are getting really expensive. And on the other hand, Chinese markets are now going through a sell-off. There's a lot of pessimism and it looks really, really undervalued. So if you take a look at the two charts I've put together, uh, you can see the one up there, that's the US S&P 500. And if I could kind of like draw it, you can see that right now it's like wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, right? It's like waving up and it's really reaching all-time highs. On the other hand, you can see the Chinese markets, I'm using the Hang Seng Index to represent the Chinese stock market. And you can see that it's been kind of like going up, going down, you know, going up and down. And it's kind of like right now selling off to a level of support right here. You can see a strong level of support that it's been selling off to. So what you're seeing right here again is that the US markets are, whoa, going up, right? Confidence, optimism, really getting expensive. And Chinese markets are like, whoa, coming down. There's huge divergence. Now, question is why? Why is this happening? Does it mean that US companies are doing a lot better? The US economy is doing a lot better and Chinese companies, Chinese economy not doing well? No. In fact, if you look at the fundamentals, you see a very different story. In the US, first quarter GDP growth uh, was GDP growth was about 6.3% GDP growth for the first quarter of 2021. Pretty good, right? Now, China's GDP growth for that same period, quarter one, 2021, 18.4%. So the Chinese economy is growing at three times faster than the US economy. How about corporate earnings? If you look at corporate earnings, US corporate earnings for the first quarter, grew at 49% year on year. That's amazing because of the low base last year, right? But Chinese corporate earnings have grown in the first quarter up 84% versus a year ago. So in other words, Chinese fundamentals, their GDP growth, their corporate profits are doing as well or even better than the US, but the stock market is going down. But the US market is going up. So why is this happening? It's because of the difference in government policy and intervention. The US government is stimulating the market to go up, whereas the Chinese government is pouring cold water over the market to kind of like, you know, bring it down temporarily. You know, why? So on one hand, the US government, they are stimulating the markets by monetary policy being really loose. They are keeping interest rates very low and they keep printing money, creating all this extra liquidity and that's why US markets are, you know, hallelujah, all time high, but it's creating an overvalued situation. So the American government is kind of like the cool dad that tells the kids, you know, go have fun, go play, you know, come back anytime you like, here, take some extra cash, have some drugs, go have fun. <laughs> On the other hand, the Chinese government is doing the exact opposite. They are being really strict. So what happened was the moment the economy started rebounding, they cut the stimulus to the markets. Uh, and they started to uh, tighten their monetary policy because they did not want the markets to go up too fast. They say, we've got to bring it down. So they're tightening policy. At the same time, they started to crack down hard on Chinese tech companies' unfair monopolistic practices. So they came down hard on Tencent, on Alibaba. And recently, they uh, suspended DD's app. DD is a recent Chinese stock that went IPO. It's the largest ride-hailing company in China. It's known as the Uber of China. They just went IPO. And the government said, hey, you've been uh, violating data, uh, data laws, right? You're taking people's personal information. You're misusing it. So they kind of like ban the app temporarily. So they're pouring a lot of cold water on the market, creating a lot of pessimism, a lot of fear. And that's why the Chinese market has been coming down. So it's like the, the Chinese government is like this strict Chinese father where it says, 
You are having too much fun. No, you cannot go out. You have gone out enough. You stay at home. You finish your homework. You practice your piano. You study hard. No going out. <laughs> so when that happens, guess what? Sure, people are like, all oh, right, gotta study, right? I don't like it. <laughs> so people are freaking out. I hate you, dad. <laughs> so the Chinese market is going down. So as a smart investor, what do you think is the right thing to do right now? Should you be buying US stocks like crazy right now because there's so much optimism and good news? And should you be selling China stocks right now because there's a lot of fear and pessimism? Well, that's the most stupid thing you can ever do. But that's what most people do. Most people, they chase performance. They see what's doing really well, let's buy more of that because it should continue to do well, right? And what's not doing well, let's get rid of that. And again, that's what most people do and that's why most people end up always losing money because by buying a lot of US right now, you're buying when it's overvalued, when you're buying at an all-time high. And by selling China right now, you are selling when it's undervalued, you're selling at all-time lows. So that's why people always end up buying high and selling low. As a smart investor, you gotta understand that all markets move in cycles. In other words, what goes up has to come down before going higher. And what goes down has to go up. There must always be a reversion to the mean. We call this mean reversion. So right now, there's a big divergence. And what you're seeing right now is that the US market is right now on the wave up. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna turn down right away because you know it can keep going up for a while. But what I'm saying is that pretty soon, it will have to come back down to fundamental reality. Having said that, I'm not saying that the US market is going to go into a big crash. I'm not saying that, right? I don't see a bear market soon. In fact, I see that by the end of the year, the US market will still end up much higher than where it is today. But what I'm saying is the US market has to come down first, temporarily breathe in before breathing out. So right now at the all-time highs, you don't want to be buying more right now. You want to wait for it to come down where stocks are more fairly priced, more undervalued before buying more US and then riding the next wave up. Make sense? On the other hand, what I'm saying for China, if you happen to be holding Chinese stocks and it's in the red, don't panic and sell. That's the most stupid thing you can ever do. If you're holding Chinese stocks right now and it's on the red, it's in the red, you should be buying more provided they are fundamentally good companies that are undervalued. So for example, if you look at DD, right, which just went IPO, DD uh, dropped from, I think it was like $14 to kind of like $11 right now. Would I buy? No, I wouldn't because I think it's still overvalued. To me, DD's intrinsic value is about $9.80. So I'll only buy DD if it goes below $9.80. And even if I buy, I'll buy just a bit because it's a very speculative company. It's not making money yet. But on the other hand, companies like Alibaba and Tencent and JD.com, they are really undervalued. Would I buy more right now? Yes, I would, all right? Because they're really undervalued and they are great companies. Okay, so for Chinese stocks right now, it's not time to sell. In fact, at any, if anything, it's now time to buy right now. You know, like the old saying goes, you gotta be greedy when others are fearful. And fearful, when others are greedy. So right now, in the US markets, people are greedy, time to be fearful. In Chinese markets, people are fearful, time to get greedy. So it's only a matter of time that China will rebound back up and the US has to correct back down and we call that the divergence coming back to its mean. So what's my portfolio strategy? By the way, a lot of you would know that I invest in both the US and in China. And currently, 75% of my position is in the US markets and 25% is in the China markets. So let's talk about my US positions first. Well, first of all, for my US stocks, am I buying more right now? No, I've got nothing to buy because most of what I have is overextended. And again, what does overextended mean? Overextended means that it's at the top of its trend. For example, if you take a look at Amazon, which I own a lot of Amazon shares, you can see that uh, the wave patterns, which I always teach, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. Now it's wave up, right? So always remember that we never want to buy on the wave up because you're always buying high. You're chasing the girl. Never chase the girl, right? You always want to buy 
on the wave down, right? So always wait for a wave down, drop and buy before the next wave up. So I started buying a lot of Amazon, right? Every time it was at its lows, every time it waved down, I bought more, I bought more and right now it's on a wave up. Do I want to buy more Amazon? No, I don't, okay? So even though Amazon's intrinsic value is 3,007, that's the intrinsic value. So right now, in fact, it's still undervalued. So fundamentally, it's undervalued, but I'm not buying more. Why? Because don't buy on the wave up. Wait for a wave down, right? So most of the stocks that I own, like Amazon, and even I own like Adobe, they're all on the wave up. Look at that, right? Wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up. Don't buy on a wave up. Wait for the wave down, right? So US stocks, nothing to buy right now. I'm waiting patiently for the correction, for the wave down to start buying again. And as you can see, by having the patience to only buy on the wave down when there's bad news as a fear, that's how I always buy at a pretty good low price, right? For example, Amazon, you can see my average price was $2,000 and now it's at $3,006. And for example, Adobe, my average price was $462, now it's $594. So the majority of the stocks that I own tend to be way higher than what I bought because I've got a discipline of only buying on a wave down when there's fear, when there's bad news. I'm greedy when people are fearful. And when people are greedy, I stay away, I don't buy more. Now, having said that, would I sell my US stocks now that they're on the wave up? Would I sell them? I'm not selling shit, okay? Why am I, why am I not selling them? Because most of the US stocks I hold are fundamentally great companies. And I know that in the next five to 10 years, they're gonna be worth a lot more double, triple where they are right now. So I'm not concerned with short-term corrections. In other words, I'm holding Adobe, I'm holding Microsoft and Facebook, I'm holding all these great companies, right? So although I expect them to come down by five or 6%, I don't care, let them come down. When they come down, I'm just gonna buy more. I'm not gonna sell right now because short-term it may go down, but long-term it's gonna go a lot higher. But how do I make money while it goes down temporarily? Well, I do short-term trading. I use options trading. I use what I call cash secured puts. I sell covered call options and I do bull put credit spreads. And all those strategies allow me to generate short-term profits when it goes down and volatility goes up. And those extra profits allow me to buy more at the support level to accumulate before the next wave up. So that's what I'm basically doing for my US stock positions. So while there's hardly anything to buy in the US market, there's a lot to buy in the China markets. And as always, I'm taking advantage of the short-term panic and pessimism and the sell-off to buy shares of great companies at less than what they're worth. So the good thing is that because of government intervention, it's creating a lot of mispricing of businesses where a business that's worth 500 bucks is now selling at 300 bucks. And to make money, you want to buy things for less than what they're worth. You want to take advantage of people's short-sightedness, people's pessimism, and people's fear. You're again greedy when others are fearful. But again, don't just buy something just because it's a Chinese stock, because there are many lousy, crap Chinese companies. Don't buy those. Only buy the best Chinese companies where they have consistent growth in their sales, their profits, their cash flow. So again, this has been mentioned many, many times, Alibaba. Yes, I own Alibaba, I've been buying more, and it's not going up yet, and I'm fine. It'll go up eventually. In fact, if you look at my portfolio, you can see that my average price for Alibaba, over here, 9988, my average price is $217, my average cost, right? Now it's 197, and it may drop even lower tonight. Um, so I'm currently like down like six grand on this and it's fine because short term, it could go lower, but long run, this will easily double and triple in value. It's a matter of being patient, right? Like 10 cent, for example, my average price on 10 cent, it's about 389. It went all the way to 700, right? And now it's dropped back down to 528. Well, I'm still above water for that one, but it's fine. It's gonna go back to seven, $800, you know, uh, in the near future. So again, if you look at Alibaba, you can see, right, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, and recent sell-off wave down right now at this support level. Again, could it go lower? Sure, everything's possible, but eventually once 
the bad news is uh, overcome, it would go to new highs again. How am I confident? Very simple, because I understand the fundamentals of the business. If you look at the fundamentals of the business, for example, and when it comes to investing, it's all about fundamentals. If you look at the fundamentals of Alibaba, and again, you can use any website. This is just one of the many websites which I like to use because of the visual charts. You can see that all this government intervention and regulation does not affect the fundamentals of the business. The business is still growing. They're still making a lot of money and their revenue is still exploding, right? Their net profit is still going up. The amount of cash they have is insane. They've got very little debt. Their cash from operations is going up, so is their net income is going up. So fundamentals are great. Share price is down purely for irrational, emotional reasons. Same thing with Tencent. Now the question people ask would be, okay, but how low can it go, right? You never know. But let me show you a bit of history, for example. If you take a look at Tencent, which is another of the Chinese tech giants, you can see this current sell-off reminds me of September 2018. Because at that time, the Chinese government, they banned the games of Tencent. Because Tencent is the largest online gaming company in the world. And they got into trouble with the government. The government banned their games in 2018. And that caused the price to drop from about, uh, about 400 bucks, thereabouts, to about $260. So it was roughly a 47% drop at the time. And that was when I started buying Tencent, right? It went up, went down. Every time it dropped, I would buy more, right? So you saw earlier, my average price was about 300 plus, right? Bought it somewhere there. But eventually what happened? Sure enough, when bad news is over, went all the way up to 774. That was about 204% gain, right? So wave up, wave down, wave up. Now it's going through a wave down. So currently Tencent is down about 32% from the highs. It's now at about 528. So is this the bottom? Well, again, no one can predict the exact bottom, but there is a strong level of support at 500 bucks. So it may rebound at 500 bucks. It may, right? So we, we never know the exact bottom. So it's important to always average in the position. Don't buy all at once. Buy in stages, right? Buying, buying, buying. Now, when it hits 500, I'm gonna start buying again. I've not started buying yet. I'm gonna buy at 500. And if it drops like 47% again, like what it did, it'll go down to about 400. That's when I'm gonna buy a lot more, all right? Because that'll be an insane discount. And I'm gonna make a lot of money eventually when this short-term bad news blows over. Now, a common question I get would be, Adam, aren't you concerned about the Chinese government's authoritarian communism regulation over the market? Not really, okay? And the reason is because I think that the Chinese government, what they're doing, they are regulating the companies to make sure there's no misuse of privacy, uh, private data, where there's no unfair monopolistic practices. They're doing all that, right? And if you ask me, I think that in the long run, that is actually healthy for fair competition and growth in the entire internet industry in China. I think it's good in the long run. But in the short term, people don't like it because they are intervening in the market. It's kind of like, like what I said, it's this strict father telling the kid, you know, I don't want you to go out so much. I want you to stay at home and study hard and practice your piano. And these are the rules, no drugs, no, no this, no that. And we, we hate our father in the short term. We, we don't have our freedom and all those things. But because of the discipline, uh, it may create a, you know, a healthier, more well-rounded, more hardworking, more successful person in the future. So that's the way I see it, right? So it's kind of like uh, the father giving medicine to the kid. They hate it, short-term pain, but long-term benefits. And that's just my own personal opinion. Again, be free to... Uh, disagree with me because, you know, I'm not saying that I know everything, but this is just my opinion. And this is how I've been making money in the markets by uh, thinking rationally and not emotionally and by looking long term and not being short sighted and not having any biases towards 
the US or to China or to anything else, but to just think logically about buying what is less than what is worth and buying great companies. And that's how I make money consistently um, every single year. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Kuhl and may the markets be with you.